Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news. The U.S. Senate floats a digital dollar. Now imagine that for a second. Have you imagined that the United States government would finally introduce their own cryptocurrency, their own digital dollar? Well, there's a bill that's floating out there on the U.S. Senate that looks like, if it gets passed, will accomplish exactly that. A digital dollar for the United States. Also, in today's video, we're going to talk about the Bitcoin halving for 2020, and we're going to explain it in a little bit of detail. So if you've been wondering, what is the Bitcoin halving and why is it important to me? This video will explain that for you. Let's get right into it. This is about cryptocurrency trading for beginners, ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Hey, it really helps us out if you smash that like button. All of the algorithms and search engines and YouTube itself really like it and really helps us to promote our videos. So, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And this disclaimer here is, is not just something that I put up here uh, to, to, for legal reasons, but really, this is something good for you to read and carefully consider if you're making any kind of investment, not just in cryptocurrency. You need to understand that any kind of financial investment involves a risk of loss and it's not suitable for every investor. Whether you're talking about cryptocurrency or real estate or stocks or any other form of investing. So take a closer look at that. I strongly recommend it. Today, the U.S. Senate is floating a digital dollar bill after the House scrubs the term from the pandemic relief plan. A draft bill posted Tuesday to the U.S. Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs defines a digital dollar and details how it might be maintained. The bill echoes language from a pair of draft U.S. House bills aimed at stimulating the economy during the outbreak. The bill introduced by ranking member Senate, uh, Senator Sher Sherrod Brown is not proposing a crypto dollar, but a digital version of the existing dollar. A process advocates, including former Commodity Futures Trading Commission chairman, have called for maintaining the U.S. financial dominance. Now, the House bill, the House draft bill, it, it mentions a digital dollar as one potential method for distributing relief funds to U.S. residents during the ongoing outbreak. Unemployment numbers have spiked as social distancing and shelter-in-place orders have cut sharply into retail revenues. And so this was originally considered as part of the, uh, you know, the outbreak relief, um, but the, the, the digital dollar bill has been separated into its own bill. Um, and I think that's a good thing because really... It needs a little bit more fleshing out than what they would have done for uh, part of if it was part of the uh, um, you know the pandemic relief that they're trying to uh, get passed in the Senate. Hopefully, they get that passed today. Um, but you never know. I mean, it is politics and everything, so everybody has to get a little piece of the pie, I guess, before they'll give it their vote. So the Bitcoin having explained. Now, the Bitcoin happening is going to be a significant and important event in the history of cryptocurrency. This is the third happening that's happened with Bitcoin to date. And every single one of them has had a dramatic impact on the price and on the usage of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. Um, but... That effect is not something that happens the day of the happening. The day of the happening, it typically takes 12 months to 18 months for the full effect of the happening to actually occur. And so, <clears throat> while the happening gives us a, a date and a time in history, 
it has an effect that lasts much longer than that specific day and time. So the Bitcoin halvening will take place sometime in May of 2020. What is the halvening? How will it affect the price? And what does it mean for miners and the cryptocurrency's long-term prospect? Here is everything that you need to know. The Havening sounds like a horror movie about an axe murderer, but it's actually the nickname for one of the most hotly anticipated events in Bitcoin's history. Sometime in May, the number of Bitcoins entering the circulation every 10 minutes, known as block rewards, will drop by half. It'll go down to 6.25. The current uh, amount of block rewards is 12.5. It's a milestone that's easy to see coming, but it happens every four years and has happened twice before. And so what is the halvening? New Bitcoins enter circulation as block rewards produced by miners who use expensive electronic equipment to earn or mine Bitcoin. Every 210,000 blocks, or roughly every four years, the total number of Bitcoin that miners can potentially win is cut in half. So this chart here, let me scroll a little bit better so we can see the full chart. This chart here shows the yellow line is how much the miners earn from from creating or for, for block rewards. And the black line here is the total amount of Bitcoin in existence. And so you can see that during the first four years, miners were getting 50 Bitcoin every time that they created a new block on the blockchain. And that pushed the total supply of Bitcoin up to 10 million in those four years. And so said in another way, in the first four years, they created half of the supply of Bitcoin that will ever be in existence. But when they drop that down by 50% from 50 Bitcoin down to 25 Bitcoin, you can also see a very significant drop in the amount of new Bitcoin and created. And so in the next four years, instead of creating another 10 million in Bitcoin, they only created another four, uh, another 6 million in Bitcoin. So it jumped from a supply of 10 million Bitcoin to 16 million Bitcoin during that four year period. Now, when it dropped again to the current rate of 12.5, you can see how much it slowed the uh, progression of new Bitcoin added into the market. And you can see how this curve just comes right up against that mark for 21 million and hovers there. And so the same thing with the amount of supply. It comes down and down and down until it gets really close to zero and does not actually reach zero until sometime in uh, the year. And that's, that's definitely wrong because we flip over. Oh, all right. So sometime in 2041, sometime around 2041, 2060 uh, is when Bitcoin will actually hit zero. And it's, I, that was a mistake. It's not 2060. It's around the 2045 date and time frame. And so it's, it's definitely going to be sometime in the future. All right. Well, here's a different date, 2140. And that's the date I thought I remembered hearing. Oh, so the graph only goes out to 2045, basically. Um, but it hasn't reached zero, even though it's so, so close to zero. They'll continue to mine more Bitcoin for the next hundred years after that point until approximately around 2140. So in 2009, the system started at 50 Bitcoins mined every 10 minutes to having later, which is today's rate, is 12.5 Bitcoins mined every 10 minutes. And they're currently dis being dispensed every 10 minutes. The process will end with a total supply of 21 million Bitcoins probably in the year 2140. So you may be asking, well, why do I keep saying probably or approximately or we're, we're guessing as to when the year is? Well, the reason is, is while they've tried to design Bitcoin so that a new block is created every 10 minutes, that's not precise. And so what happens is as more miners get onto the blockchain, um, the, the chains 
the, the computations that actually create blocks happen faster. And so there's an adjustment to the difficulty of Bitcoin mining that happens every two weeks. But there are periods of time where it hasn't been adjusted. And so while today they're expecting the halvening for Bitcoin to occur on May 13th, 2020, if we were to turn the clock back to sometime in January, so let me give you today's date. Today is March 25th, 2020. It's currently 6.49 in the morning Central Standard Time. Now, if we were to go back to, say, the beginning of January of 2020, this was actually around the 20th of May. But as we've gotten closer to the halvening, there's been an increase in the number of miners, which meant that they were mining those blocks a little bit faster. Now, every two weeks, there is an adjustment to the difficulty to try and keep it right around every 10 minutes a new block is created. But that's not an exact science. It's not an exact method because it does take two weeks before they make another adjustment. And with the amount of, of new miners jumping on board, it's actually reduced this date by about seven days in the last two months, last couple of months. Because um, I, I didn't record when in January it was actually saying May 20th, but today it's down to May 13th. And this clock is counting down to the actual moment of the Bitcoin halvening when the rewards get cut in half for the miners. So, <clears throat> unlike monetary policy of state-issued currencies, which unfold through a political process and human institutions, you know, like the U.S. government is now debating on whether or not they're going to influx another trillion dollars into the economy. Well, they're basically printing money. And they're basically creating new money out of thin air. Well, Bitcoin had the same opportunity. They're, they're in a situation where they had to decide how new Bitcoin would be introduced into the system. And so Bitcoin's monetary policy is written into code. It's programming. And it's shared across the entire Bitcoin network and runs on the soft on the hardware that all of the miners run. Changing it would require an immense output of coordination and agreement across the community of Bitcoin users. And when they're talking about the community of Bitcoin users, they're not so much talking about the people that own Bitcoin as they are talking about the people who are mining Bitcoin. And it's really a matter of the miners all have to agree. Now, today, we have millions of miners all over the world in many, many different countries. In fact, I haven't done this, uh, I haven't looked this up recently, but it wasn't that long ago that I was looking at this and it looked like there were miners in every single country around the world. There were very few countries where they had few or no miners. And so Bitcoin mining is happening on a global basis. There are certain countries that have more Bitcoin miners than other countries. China is one of the, the leaders when it comes to Bitcoin mining. They have the, a, a mass amount or a large amount of the Bitcoin miners do reside in China. But it is a global phenomenon. And in order for you to change the software that's controlling the amount of Bitcoin created with every new block, it has to be a coordinated effort among all of the miners and all of the hardware that's actually doing the mining. Unlike most national currencies we're familiar with, like dollars, euros, Bitcoin was designed with a fixed supply and predictable inflation schedule. There will be a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins, and this is a predetermined number that makes Bitcoins scarce. And this scarcity, alongside with their utility, is largely what influences their price or the market value. So the Bitcoin price is, is affected dramatically because of the scarcity of a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins. Think about that for a second. It's not possible for every human being to own a single Bitcoin. So that's one of the reasons why Bitcoins can be divided into parts of 100 million per Bitcoin. The smallest part of a Bitcoin is what's called a Satoshi. 
and there's 100 million Satoshis in a single Bitcoin. And so virtually everybody could own a few Satoshis. Today, um, 115 to, I don't remember, I'd have to actually calculate the price and I haven't done that in a while, but somewhere around 180 Satoshis are e equal to one US penny, somewhere in that ballpark. So another unique aspect of Bitcoin is Nakamoto's programmed the block reward to decrease over time. This is another way in which it differs from the norm of modern financial systems where central banks control the money supply. In stark contrast to Bitcoin's having block reward, the supply of the U.S. dollar has roughly tripled since 2000. And so today, there's almost triple the amount of U.S. dollars in circulation than there was in 2000. And, and so in 20 years, we've, I mean, that's, I, that boggles my mind. I had no idea that we've tripled the amount of U.S. dollars in circulation. That is concerning. Um, and I, it makes me surprised that the U.S. dollar has not been impacted in a greater way than it already has. Now this chart is significant, and the reason why this chart is significant is because um, this shows the price of Bitcoin from the beginning all the way to today, and these bars, this line, are the previous two halvenings. And so we can observe how the halvening affected the price of Bitcoin. Now the, the chart itself, this is not a regular chart, this is what's called a logarithmic chart. And so while this line is 10 cents and that line is 20 cents, when you get up here, this line is $1,000 and this line is $2,000. And so the amount of distance between each of these lines uh, is, is dramatically greater. You know, this line to this line is actually $10,000, whereas you know, this line to this line is only 10 cents. And so try and keep that in mind that this is extremely compressed in terms of, you know, the actual dollar values, you know, because here you've got a $20 Bitcoin and here you've got a $1,000 Bitcoin and then here you have a $20,000 Bitcoin. So, so these numbers, these price uh, on this chart are extremely compressed. And you can see after this halvening, after the very first halvening, Bitcoin's price shot up dramatically over the next 12 months. Now with this halvening, the price of Bitcoin shot up over the next 12 months, but then continued for another six months. And so it took 18 months from halvening to this all-time high and it took 12 months from this happening to this all-time high. And so that's why they say that it takes about a 12 to 18 months for it to reach new all-time highs. Um, but notice how you know the price action does the normal Bitcoin thing where it can go up dramatically and then drop by as much as 50%. Because here is the $200 price and this is this line here is the $100 price. And so from here down to here, you're talking more than a 60%, 70% drop in price. But then it went on up from, uh, what is that? Somewhere around $70, $80, not sure, uh, all the way up to $1,000. So it finally peaked at $1,000 after that first halvening. And then you can see that the price began to slide again. And then here, 12 months before the second halvening, the price began to start increasing until it reached the halvening. And then after the halvening, it continued to go. So right here, the price is hovering right around the $200 price range. And it went all the way to $20,000 over the, this is a two and a half year period of time. Over that two and a half year period of time, it went from $200 to $20,000. So that's a very dramatic increase in price. And that's why a lot of people are interested in Bitcoin from an investment perspective because there's very few places where you can invest money and see a tenfold uh, return or greater uh, in just a two and a half year time period. So that's kind of what everybody is looking for. 
The 2012 having provided the first demonstration of how markets would respond to Nakamoto's unorthodox supply schedule. Until then, the Bitcoin community didn't know how a sudden decline in rewards would affect the network. As it turned out, the price began to rise shortly after the halvening. The second halvening in 2016 was highly anticipated and is the one now approaching, as is the one now approaching, with Coindesk running a live blog of the event and Blockchain.com putting out a countdown. Each halvening has encouraged vigorous speculation about how the event would affect Bitcoin's price. And so we're seeing the same sort of thing going on. And you can see by the clock here that the halvening countdown, we're 49 days away. So it's less than a month and, and just a few days out. We're coming up on that happening very, very quickly. Now this, I wanted to share this chart with you because the value of this, this is Google Trends and it tells us how much or how frequently people are searching for the term Bitcoin halving. And by understanding people's interest in the Bitcoin halving, we know that, that what parts of the world are actually taking action, have a, have, a, have a degree of interest in the Bitcoin halving. And I thought it was very interesting to note that Switzerland is, is the very, it has the very highest amount of searches happening uh, for the Bitcoin halving, and then the numbers drop off. And as we scroll through here, looking for the United States, the U.S. doesn't come up until we get to number 21. And so there's a lot of other countries out there that are extremely interested in the upcoming Bitcoin halving. Um, and the interest is much greater outside of the United States than it actually is in the United States. So this, this is going to be a significant event, but it's not so much a significant event on the day it occurs as it is for the days leading up to it and the days that come after it. And so I'm looking forward to see how, how this is all going to play out. Let me know how I can be of service to you. What, are you. what interests you? What are you curious about? What did I not explain as well as I could? Or do you disagree with me? I'm interested in hearing from your polite disagreements because you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know with each other, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So please leave your polite disagreements in the comments below on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.